Hello guys, welcome on Tesla Adventures and in this video let us discuss about the mechanical equilibrium condition. So a system is said to be in mechanical equilibrium if uh, the translational as well as rotational equilibrium conditions coexist, which means that translational equilibrium means that the net force acting on the system is zero and uh, the rotational equilibrium means that the net torque acting on the system is zero. So you can see this diagram that these forces are in the same plane as that of object as well as the net force of these forces is zero. Therefore, we can say that the torque acting on this object would be zero because the forces are acting in the same plane. Now. Now we have already discussed in the previous uh, video of point of application of force or the uh, force couple that if the net force acting on the system is zero then the net torque would be same about each and every point. So it is uh, the necessary and sufficient condition for equilibrium is the fact that net force should be zero as well as the torque acting about any one point would be zero. Because the, if the net force acting on the system is zero and the torque acting about any one point in the system is zero, then the torque acting about each point in the system would be zero. Okay, so this is very important to note. Now uh, we can see that the equilibrium are of three types. The first one is unstable equilibrium in which you can see that if this rod is hinged from the lower position and uh, it is in equilibrium in this condition right now but if I displace this rod slightly by some angle then it would topple down and it would never regain its original position. So this equilibrium position is known as unstable equilibrium in which system once displaced will never attain this position again. Now in a stable equilibrium condition you can see that this rod is being hinged from the top point and if I displace this rod slightly by some angle then this rod will again attain this e equilibrium position. So this signifies that this position is a stable equilibrium position in which the system once displaced regains this position again. And in neutral equilibrium position if I hinge this rod from the center then you can see that if I displace the rod about the center by a slight angle then this rod will maintain this position and uh, it will remain in the original displaced position. Okay, so it will neither regain the original position nor it would go away from the uh, original position. It would maintain uh, the equilibrium in the new displaced position. So this is the neutral equilibrium. Now in, in the next video we will be discussing the questions uh, of equilibrium. Thank you. In this question you can see that there is a rod of weight W. This is W and it is placed on two knife edges A and B and uh, these uh, edges are able to support this rod in equilibrium in horizontal position. The distance between these two edges is D and the center of mass of the rod is at a distance of X from hinge A. Now we have to find out the normal reactions at A and B. So let's suppose that the normal reaction at A is Na and the normal reaction at B is Nb. So first of all we know that the net force acting on this system is zero and therefore Na plus Nb will be equal to W. This is the first equation and again we can balance the torque about center of mass and torque about COM will be zero. So Na into X will be equal to Nb into d minus x so so this says that n a by n b is equal to or we can write down n a is equal to n b into d minus x upon x 
so we can substitute this value of n a in the first equation so it is n b into d minus x upon x plus n b is equal to w and taking n b as common so this would be d upon x into is equal to w so n b would be equal to x w by d so this is n b and if we have to find out n a so we can substitute the value of n b in this equation in the second equation so n a will be equal to x w by d into n b so this is x w by d into d minus x upon x so cancelling this x so n a will be equal to w into d minus x upon d so the correct answer would be option number b okay thank you in this question you can see that there is a uniform rod of total length l and it is placed symmetrically on these two walls this is l by 4 and this is l by 4 so the center of mass would be lying just in the midpoint of the distance between the walls so this would be the center of mass and therefore mg would be acting in the downward direction okay so if this distance this is l by 4 and obviously this is also l by 4 so we know that the rod is in equilibrium therefore net torque is zero about com also so we can write down the net torque about com as n1 into l by 4 and this would be in clockwise sense and minus n2 into l by 4 and this would be in anti-clockwise sense so this net torque would be zero and therefore we can say that n1 would be equal to n2 so the correct option will be option number c thank you in this question you can see that there is a uniform rod which is hanging by these two strings which are massless and the tension in these two strings is t1 and t2 respectively as shown now the length total length of the rod is l and the distance between these two strings is 3l by 4 so obviously some part of the rod is uh, lying outside the range of these strings now we have to find out the ratio of t1 and t2 so that this rod rests in equilibrium now we know that the mg of the rod would be acting from the center of mass and the center of mass would be at a distance this is obviously l by 4 and this will be l by 4 so this distance would be l by 2 so this is the center of mass now only to find out the ratio of t1 and t2 we can balance the torque about com so torque about com is zero because this system is in equilibrium which is a translational equilibrium and which is also rotational equilibrium so the torque of the tensions about com will be t1 into l by 4 and this torque is in clockwise sense you can see that t1 would be rotating this rod in clockwise sense about the center of mass and minus t2 into l by 2 so this is equal to 0 and therefore t1 upon t2 will be equal to 2 so the correct answer is 2 now uh, this was the question only but if we have to find out the value of t1 and t2 so we can also write that t1 plus t2 is equal to mg and we can use these two equations to find out the values of t1 and t2 thank you in this <coughs> question there is a beam balance and that beam balance has two pans on both the sides and pans are of negligible mass it is given that a object weighs w1 when it is kept on one pan and uh, it is w2 
when it is kept on the other pan now we have to find out the true weight w of the object now it is very clear that this pan is unbalanced because if it would <coughs> be giving the value of that weight on both the pans same then it would be balanced but this is not the situation in this question because when we are keeping this object on the different pans so let's suppose it is 1 and it is 2 so the weight coming is different so we can easily predict that this beam balance is not uh, correctly calibrated and its hinge is not at the center so so let us suppose that we are placing this object of weight w in this pan and to balance it we are keeping uh, another weight w1 on this pan so let us suppose that this distance is x and this is y so we can write down the equation of torque that torque of net torque obviously would be zero and therefore torque of the weight kept in pen one would be w into x and that is equal to the torque of the weight which is kept in pen two that is w1 into y so we can see that x upon y is equal to w1 upon w this is the first equation now in the second case uh, we have placed this weight <coughs> w2 in this pan and w in this pan so again we are writing the equation of the torque and equating that torque to zero so w2 into x will be equal to w into y so again you can see that x upon y is equal to w upon w2 so this is the equation number two so if we compare equation one and equation two then w1 <coughs> upon w will be equal to w upon w2 so w square will be equal to w1 w2 and w will be equal to root of w1 into w2 so this is the true weight of the object so the correct option would be option number a now let's move on the next question in this video you can see that there is a rectangular plate of dimensions b into a and this plate is in the horizontal position now one of the edge of this plate is being hinged and this plate can only rotate about this hinge but this plate is kept in equilibrium in the horizontal position by striking the elastic balls on this half part of the plate so we have to find out that uh, what should be the velocity of these elastic balls with which they would strike this plate so that this plate remains in equilibrium now first of all we find out the torque of mg acting on this plate so the torque of mg would be mg into b by 2 where <coughs> mg is assumed to be concentrated at center of mass of the plate and the distance of this center of mass from the hinge is b by 2 so the mass of the plate is 3 <coughs> 3 and g is 10 and b is 2 so this is 30 <coughs> now to balance <coughs> this torque it is given that the 100 balls are striking per unit time per unit area on uh, this half part of the plate so let us find out the force so force would be equal to the <coughs> pressure into area and this pressure is given as let us suppose that each ball is striking with some velocity v so in the elastic collision each ball will rebound with the same velocity v and therefore the change in momentum of each ball would be m into 2v because they are striking with v and they are rebounding with v so the change in momentum would be m into 2v 
ओके नाउ देर आर हंड्रेड बॉल्स स्ट्राइकिंग पर यूनिट टाइम पर यूनिट एरिया सो दिस वुड बी द प्रेशर विच वुड बी इक्वल टू एम इंटू टू वी इंटू हंड्रेड एंड इफ वी मल्टीप्लाई दिस प्रेशर विद एरिया ऑफ द पार्ट इन विच द बॉल्स आर स्ट्राइकिंग देन दैट एरिया वुड बी ए इंटू बी बाई टू सो दिस वुड बी द फोर्स सो फोर्स वुड बी एम इज जीरो पॉइंट जीरो वन इंटू टू वी इंटू हंड्रेड इंटू ए एज इक्वल टू वन एंड बी इज इक्वल टू टू सो दिस इज वन ओके सो दिस फोर्स वुड बी इक्वल टू टू वी एंड यू कैन अज्यूम दिस फोर्स टू बी कॉन्सेंट्रेटेड एट द सेंटर ऑफ द शेडिड पार्ट बिकॉज द बॉल्स आर स्ट्राइकिंग विद यूनिफॉर्म डेंसिटी इन दिस हाफ पार्ट सो यू कैन आईदर फाइंड आउट द टॉर्क बाई इंटीग्रेशन और यू कैन कॉन्सेंट्रेट दिस फोर्स एट द सेंटर ऑफ द शेडिड पार्ट बिकॉज द डेंसिटी ऑफ द बॉल्स इज यूनिफॉर्म नाउ द डिस्टेंस ऑफ दिस सेंटर फ्रॉम द हिंज इज बी बाय टू प्लस ए बाय टू यू कैन सी इन फैक्ट थ्री बी बाय टू इन सॉरी इन फैक्ट थ्री बी बाय फोर ओके बिकॉज दिस डिस्टेंस वुड बी बी बाय फोर एंड देर फोर दिस डिस्टेंस वुड बी थ्री बी बाय फोर सो द टॉर्क वुड बी इक्वल टू एफ इंटू थ्री बी बाय फोर एंड देर फोर इट इज टू वी इंटू थ्री बी इज वन बी इज इनफैक्ट टू बाय फोर सो दिस इज थ्री वी एंड दिस थ्री वी शुड बी इक्वल टू द टॉर्क ऑफ एम जी सो दैट इट मे बैलेंस द प्लेट सो वी शुड बी इक्वल टू टेन मीटर्स पर सेकेंड सो दिस इज द रिक्वायर्ड वेलासिटी ऑफ द बॉल्स सो दैट दे मे बैलेंस द प्लेट बाय स्ट्राइकिंग इलास्टिकली इन द हाफ पार्ट ऑफ द प्लेट थैंक यू इन दिस क्वेश्चन देर आर टू रॉड्स ऑफ डिफरेंट मासिस एम एंड कैपिटल एम बट ऑफ इक्वल लेंथ आर जॉइन टूगेदर टू फॉर्म आ एल एंड दिस एल इज पाई वोटेड फ्रॉम द जॉइंट विद द रूफ एंड दिस इज एन इक्वल विदियम इन दिस पोजिशन सो वी हैव टू फाइंड आउट द रेशियो ऑफ कैपिटल एम अपॉन स्मॉल एम नाउ वी नो दैट द एम जी ऑफ दिस रॉड वुड बी एक्टिंग इन डाउनवर्ड डायरेक्शन एंड द एम जी ऑफ दिस रॉड वुड बी एक्टिंग इन डाउनवर्ड डायरेक्शन फ्रॉम इट सेंटर ऑफ मास and this is capital mg now we know that if we extend this force and if we find out this distance so if it is x and this distance is y so let us uh, write down the x so if the length of the rod is l and this angle is obviously 60 degree so we can see that x would be equal to this is l by 2 and this is sin 60 so x would be equal to l by 2 sin 60 and y would be equal to l by 2 sin 30 okay so so we know that this system is in equilibrium and therefore the net torque on, acting on this system would be zero so the torque of small mg and capital mg would be zero therefore torque of small mg would be mg into x and torque of capital mg would be capital mg into y i am equating these torques because when i'll write the net torque as zero so i would write that mg into x minus capital mg into y is equal to zero so if i would replace that term on other side of that equal equal mark then the equation would be mg into x and that is equal to capital mg into y now cancelling this g with g so capital m upon a small m is x upon y and therefore x is equal to l by 2 sin 60 and y is equal to l by 2 sin 30 so this is equal to root 3 so the correct answer would be option number 
D. Now let's move on the next question. In this question, you can see that there is a rod and there are four <coughs> equal forces which are acting in the direction shown. The points at which these forces are acting are at a distance of 20, 40, 60 and 80 from this end. Now we have to find out that which option is correct. Now the first option says that rod is at rest. So you can see that rest situation is uh, made up of two conditions. One is the fact that net force should be zero and other is the fact that net torque should be zero. So you can see that that 2F force is, is acting in the upward direction and 2F force is acting in the downward direction. Therefore, the net force is zero, obviously, but as all the forces are situated at different distances, therefore, the torque acting on the rod about any point or let's suppose about this point O is non-zero. Therefore, uh, we can say that rod will experience some torque. So, one of the correct answer is option number B. Now, uh, option number C is that rod will experience a linear motion. This is invalid because uh, the net force acting on the rod is zero. And uh, obviously, D option is not also not correct. Now, let's move on the next question. In this question, you can see that there is a, a rod which is kept by leaning on the wall and the floor and the wall and floor are frictionless it is given in the question now to keep this rod in equilibrium we have to apply some force p at the lowermost end of the rod and we have to assume that the mass of the rod is m and we have to find out the minimum value of this uh, applied force p so that rod remains in equilibrium now let us first of all draw all the forces acting on the rod so the mg of the rod would be acting from the center in the downward direction. The normal reaction of the wall would be acting in this direction. So let us name it as N1. And the normal reaction of the floor would be acting in this direction. So let us name it as N2. So these are the forces and as well as P is also acting in this direction. So these are the forces which are acting on the rod and we know that due to application of this force P, the rod is in equilibrium. Rod is neither accelerating and uh, neither rod is rotating about any point. So we can say that the force acting on the rod in X direction would be zero. Therefore, N1 would be balancing out P. So this is the first equation. And we can also say that the force acting on this rod in Y direction would be also zero. So N2 would be balancing Mg. Okay, now uh, the third, this is the second equation. Now the third equation can be obtained by writing the equation of the torque. So we can write the equation of the torque about any point because uh, neither about neither of the point, the rod is rotating. So we can balance the torque about any point. So let us balance the torque about point A. So this uh, would be the torque of rod about a would be zero and the torque of mg in fact torque of <coughs> n1 would be zero because n1 is passing itself from point a plus the torque of mg would be mg into this distance so we can find out this distance by this angle is theta and if the length of the rod is L, then this would be L cos theta, L by 2 cos theta. So this would be mg into L by 2 cos theta. You can also uh, see that this mg is rotating the rod about point A in clockwise sense. And N2 is rotating the rod about point A in anti-clockwise sense. So uh, we can write the torque of N2 and the distance of perpendicular distance of n2 from point a is l cos theta so this would be 
uh, in anti clockwise sense so minus n2 into l cos theta okay and the torque of p would be in clockwise sense so it would be plus p into the distance of p from a perpendicular distance would be l sin theta so p into l sin theta would be equal to 0 now you can see that n2 is already equal to mg and therefore this equation would be minus mg l by 2 cos theta plus p is equal to n1 so we have to find out p only so plus p l sin theta is equal to 0 so cancelling this l with l p would be equal to mg cot theta by 2 so this is the force required to keep this rod in equilibrium leaning on wall and floor now let's move on the next question in this question there is a uniform meter stick now this meter stick means that it is a stick of total length of 1 meter and 60 cent uh, 100 centimeters so the mass of this meter stick is 400 grams and it is connected by two light ropes on its both ends and a object of 100 gram is placed on this stick at a distance of 60 centimeter from the left hand a so we have to calculate the tension in these two ropes so let us suppose that this tension is t1 and this tension is t2 <coughs> and the mg of this meter stick would be acting in the downward direction from the center of the rod and the center of the rod would be at a distance of 50 centimeter because the total length of the rod is 100 centimeters so this is capital mg now the small mg of this object would be acting from this point <coughs> in the downward direction and therefore we can uh, write the equation of net force that net force is zero because this system is not accelerating in any of the direction therefore we can say that t1 plus t2 is equal to m plus m g so this is the first equation so t1 plus t2 <coughs> is equal to m plus m is 500 grams and i can write the 500 grams as half kg and g as 10 so t1 plus t2 will be equal to 5 so this is the first equation and now we also know that there is no torque acting on this system at any point you can see this system is not rotating or not revolving around any of the axis therefore <clears throat> the net torque about any point is zero so let us uh, consider the net torque to be zero about a so it is also zero about b and you can also find out the uh, values of t1 and t2 by balancing the net torque about b and answer would be the same so we are uh, evaluating t1 and t2 by balancing the net torque about a so i am writing the equation of torque about a so obviously this tension force is itself passing through this point a therefore <clears throat> the torque of this tension force would be zero and we would write that t1 into zero because torque is force into perpendicular distance from the axis of rotation and if this force is itself passing through the axis of rotation so we can write the torque to be zero <coughs> now now uh, the torque of mg capital mg so it would be plus capital mg into 50 centimeters you can see that this capital mg is acting in the downward direction and the distance of this capital mg from this point a is 50 centimeters plus small mg into 60 because this small mg is acting at a distance of 60 centimeter and also it is in the same direction of capital mg so we can see 
that the torque produced by this capital mg and this is small mg would be the same would be in the same sense so this is very important to note that the torque produced by this capital mg and small mg would be in clockwise sense you can see that if we break this rope then this capital mg would rotate this rod about point a in the clockwise sense and as will be the small mg so now you can see that the distance of this t2 from this point a will be 100 cm but also a fact that t2 is rotating this rod in anti clockwise sense about this point a so the torque of t2 would be in negative sign and this is t2 into 100 and that would be equal to 0 so you can see <coughs> that t2 into 100 is equal to capital mg will be 4 into 50 plus small mg would be 1 into 60 so this t2 into 100 will be equal to 200 plus 60 and t2 will be equal to 260 uh, this is 260 upon 100 which is equal to 2.6 newtons and we know that t2 is t2 plus t1 is equal to 5 so from equation 1 we can see that t1 plus t2 is equal to 5 and therefore this t1 will be equal to <coughs> 5 minus t2 so t1 would be equal to 2.4 newtons so these are the final answers now let's move on the next question in this question you can see that there is a triangular ladder as shown in the figure and this angle is 90 degree the ladder is of negligible mass and a man of 60 kg is sitting on this ladder on the top and the ladder and the man is in equilibrium so the ground would be applying some normal reaction forces at these two points and we have to find out these forces so let us first of all draw the mg of the man so this is the mg and this mg is equal to 600 Newton and let's suppose this point is A and this point is B so we have to balance out the torque of this normal reactions about this point O so let us suppose that this is the point O which is the point of intersection of this mg with the ground and therefore the torque about this point O would be zero now you can also balance the torque about any of the point a o or b because uh, this complete system is neither rotating about any one point so you can balance the torque about any point so let me balance the torque about o so it would be n a into this perpendicular distance now you can see that this perpendicular distance this is 1 meter and this angle would be 45 degree and this would be 90 and therefore this would be 45 which means that this distance would also be 2 meters this is 2 meters and this distance would also be 2 meters so this is Na into 2 and that is equal to nb into 2 which means that na is equal to nb as well as na and nb are combinedly balancing out this 600 newtons and they are equal also so this is 2na is equal to 600 and Na is equal to 300 and Nb is also equal to 300 
so this is the value of na and nb so that this boy remains seated uh, without toppling the ladder thank you in this question you can see that there are two boys one is weighing 20 kg and the second one is weighing 25 kg they are trying to balance a seesaw of total length of 4 meter with its fulcrum at the center so this is the fulcrum this one and it is just placed at the center the distance of this first boy is 2 uh, meters and the distance of this second boy from the fulcrum is let's suppose x because it is given that the first boy is sitting at the one end of this rod and we have to find out the distance at which this second boy should sit so that the system remains in equilibrium so this boy first boy has a mass of 20 kg and the second boy has a mass of 25 kg therefore mg of the first boy would be acting in the downward direction which is 200 newtons and the mg of this second boy would be acting in the downward direction which is 250 newtons now we have to balance the torque about fulcrum so torque about this fulcrum will be zero so 200 into 2 and minus 250 into x this negative sign shows a fact that if 200 newton is rotating this rod anti clockwise then this 250 newton would be rotating this rod clockwise about this fulcrum so the torque of 250 newton would be in opposite direction as compared to the torque of 200 newtons so this is equal to 0 so x would be equal to 400 upon 250 so this is 8 upon 5 so the distance at which this second boy should sit is equal to 1.6 meters now let's move on the next question in this question you can see that there is a rod which is hinged at this point a with the wall and the length of the rod is 1 meter the mass of the rod is 10 kg and there is a light string bc uh, whose which is connected with the wall and this end of the rod now this string has a mass of 15 kg connected at this position and uh, it is also given that this string bd and this string bc are two different strings now if this whole system is in equilibrium then we have to find out the tension in the string bc as well as the hinge force acted upon uh, the rod ab by this hinge so let us start by drawing all the forces on this system so the tension would be acting in this direction this is let's suppose t1 and this tension is t2 now the tension t2 would be acting on the rod in a down, downward direction as well as uh, there would be some hinge force acting at point a now let us suppose that there are two components of hinge force this is horizontal component and let us assume that vertical component is in the upward direction and also the value of mg which is 50 150 newton would be acting on this mass and value of 100 newton mg would be acting on this rod at center of mass so so let us first of all uh, write down the equation of forces so we know that y component of all the forces acting on the system would be zero therefore i am writing the y components so for 15 kg mass we can see that it is also in rest condition so t2 would be equal to 150 newton and for rod <coughs> rv is acting in the upward direction plus the component of tension in the upward direction is t1 sin 53 so rv plus t1 sin 53 and 
that is equal to T2 as well as Mg, which is Mg of the rod. So this is Rv plus T1 sin 53, sin 53 is 4 by 5 and that is equal to T2 which is 150 as well as 100. So this is 250. So you can see that that <coughs> 5 Rv plus 4 T1 is equal to 250 into 5 which is 1250. So this is the equation number 1. Now let us balance the forces in horizontal direction. So fx is also 0 on the rod. So rh would be equal to t1 cos 53. So rh horizontal component of hinge force would be equal to t1 and cos 53 is 3 by 5. This is the second equation. Now we have to balance the torque on this system about any point and we, then we can find out the final uh, equation. So let us balance the torque of the system about A. So torque about A will be 0. So you can see that uh, this R vertical and R horizontal are passing through point A and therefore their torque would be 0, Rv into 0 plus Rh into 0 as well as this mg is acting in the downward direction and it is acting at this point. So the torque of this mg would be 100 into 1 by 2 because the distance of this point center of mass from hinge A is 1 by 2. So this is <coughs> 100 into 1 by 2. Now, now this tension force T1 sin 53 is acting in the upward direction and T2 this component is T1 cos 53. So you can see that this component of tension T1 cos 53 is passing through this point A. So its torque would be 0. So I am writing that T1 cos 53 into 0 and the component uh, of t1 sin 53 is at a distance of 1 meter from this end so this is <coughs> and you have to also see a fact that this mg 100 newton is acting in the downward direction and hence it is rotating this rod in clockwise sense about a while this tension t1 sin 53 is rotating this rod in anti clockwise sense about a so there would be a negative sign while writing the torque of T1 sin 53. So it is T1 sin 53 into the distance is 1 and uh, this T2 is acting in the downward direction. So it is also rotating this, it is also trying to rotate this rod in clockwise sense. So the torque of T2 and 100 Newton will be in the same sense. Therefore, a positive sign would come with T2. So it is plus T2 into the distance is 1 meter and the total torque would be equal to 0. So this is 50, 100 into 1 by 2 is 50 minus T1 into sin 53 is 4 by 5 plus T2 is equal to 0. So the equation will be <coughs> this is 50 is equal to 4 by 5 t1 minus t2 and 4 t1 minus 5 t2 is equal to 250. This is the third equation. Now you can solve these three equations and you can count the number of variables. So the number of variables here are rv, t1, t2 and rh. So these are uh, in fact four variables. So we need uh, another equation to find out these uh, variables. So you can uh, form the other equation by balancing the torque of this system about point B. So you can also balance the, the torque about point B. So uh, this force T1 and T2 is passing through point B as well as uh, 
this RH is passing through point B. If we extend RH, then you can see that RH would be passing through point P. So the torque of T2, T1 and RH would be zero about point B. And also uh, the torque of RV would be RV into one in the clockwise sense, as well as uh, the torque of 100 Newton would be 100 into one by two in the anti-clockwise sense. So balancing the torque about point B, <coughs> tau b would be 0. So the equation would be rv into 1 minus 100 into 1 by 2. That would be 0. So rv would be equal to 50 Newton. So this is the fourth equation. So if rv is equal to 50 Newton, then we can calculate uh, t1. So 5 rv plus 4 t1 is equal to 1 to 5 0. 5 rv plus 4 t1 is equal to 1 2 5 0 so this is 5 into 50 2 50 uh, plus 4 t1 is equal to 1 2 5 0 and 4 t1 is equal to <coughs> 1000 therefore t1 is equal to 250 now this is t1 the value of uh, rh is t1 into 3 by 5 so rh is T1 into 3 by 5. So RH would be equal to 150. And these are the values which we have to find out. So let's now move on the next question. <coughs>